This one tool just made every Quest 3 game look way better. I'm telling you right now, if you're not using this, you're really missing out on the true power of the Quest 3. This is the Quest Game Optimizer. What is the Quest Game Optimizer, you might ask? It's a piece of software that you can put on your Quest that allows you to manually control the resolution of the Quest 3 headset, allowing you to take games that already look good or maybe don't even look as good and increase the resolution so they're much clearer and they look way, way better. It actually allows you to control the power of your Quest 3, how much foveated rendering you have, that's that blur around the edges of your vision, how much power is being used by the GPU and the CPU, and it has a ton of profiles. All of the new games get added as they come out. So you can just go into a library and it actually has all of the games that you want to play there, or most of them. And there are profiles for specific things, whether you want the highest graphics or you want the most battery power that you can get out of a game. You can choose a profile, tell it what you want, and you can enjoy the game in the best possible way. You can also set things manually as well if you want to. And there are other tools inside of this as well, especially for recording if you're a content creator. But we'll get into the actual software and how it all works later on in the video when I do a walkthrough to show you how it functions and it's got a new menu system and all that cool stuff. First, let's talk about Quest Game Optimizer a little bit more in detail. First of all, it's not a free piece of software. It's about 10 bucks, but I'm telling you right now, Really, honestly, if you haven't tried it, you really need to. It is well worth the $10, and I don't play anything anymore without using this to make the resolution way better. You see, they, they pull back the resolution a lot of times, what's being used, because they don't want to cause problems with the software or the hardware. They don't want the battery drain too far. You can increase the resolution, which makes everything look clearer and still be able to have a great experience. You might lose some of the battery life that you have in your battery that might die faster, but there are solutions to that, like getting a battery strap. And I'll put a link to the battery strap that I use down in the description that I recommend. But overall, the tool, what it does is it increases the quality of the visuals inside of your Quest 3. Now, it's not gonna take the assets themselves and make them better or add shadows or bloom or any of the things that the Quest 3 is capable of doing. But what it is going to do is it's going to increase the resolution to the point where it's actually shockingly different. Now it's hard to show this in a video you've been seeing side by sides. It's really hard to show really clearly how much of a difference it makes. I hope that you can see somewhat of a difference in these two images. But when you put the headset on and you activate one of these profiles, and the resolution increases to 125% uh, or 150% in some cases, depending on how much power you have to use and how much overhead there is, you're gonna be shocked at how much clearer everything is. Whether you're playing a game that's already looking great, like the recently launched Ghost Town, or even an older game that might not have that resolution or hasn't gotten an update, and you can increase the resolution even if you're not increasing the assets, it makes a massive difference in clarity and in experience. And, I'm th and this is by far the best Thing that you can do if you want to get the most out of your Quest 3 from a visual standpoint. Installing it's not really that difficult. You do have to have developer mode enabled and it's really not that hard to do. I'll put a piece of a previous video at the end of this video just so that you can see how that's done and I'll walk you through setting up a developer account. It just takes a matter of minutes really. It's not that big of a deal. Now before we talk about getting everything set up so you can get the most out of your Quest 3 with Game Optimizer, let's jump into the headset really quickly. I'm gonna show you the settings, show you how it works, and explain to you why it's such a game changer for the Quest 3. All right, this is the Quest Games Optimizer. I've actually got it pinned in the quick bar down here because I use it when I start the Quest every single time and it's the fastest way to just jump into that and get started. This is the main menu area here and I can actually sort if I want to or search. We'll get into some of these settings here in just a minute. If you hit this little button here, you can do different categories. You can do optimized games, unoptimized games, time played, you can sort by a whole bunch of things. I'm just gonna do recently installed applications. And then you can see here, you've got a few different options for some of the most recent games that I've had installed. These are the three games I've actually been using to test this for this video. So let's just look at those really quickly. You can scrub down through this and you can see each game or experience has a different little icon in the bottom right. That tells you the maximum settings that they have as a profile. You've got battery, which is the reduced settings to help your battery last longer. This is smoothness. It increases the hertz to 120 hertz and allows it to be smoother without doing anything to the display resolution. You can see there's a resolution 100% right there. This is HD. This is increasing the resolution to 133%. It shows you the different settings that it's using. The, this is HD+, Plus, which Ghost Town doesn't currently have a profile for. So some of them do have HD+. Plus. Let's take a look at Match Point Tennis so you can see what that is. 
you can choose which one you want. You can either hit start here or you can set the default. You've got HD plus here. See, this goes to up to 137% resolution and you can adjust this all as well in your personal profile. So you can select personal profile here and you can set your render scale. This is your Hertz rate up to 120 Hertz. This is the CPU GPU level. So how much they're working, like how hard they're working to make these settings work. The higher that those go, the faster your battery will go down. Just keep that in mind. And this is the fixed foveated rendering. This is, you could do turret really high or very high, and that gives you a really blurry outside edge, or you could do it off or just default for whatever the game is. These all have different settings that are already put in place that people know work, which is the best part about the profiles. You can go in here and this is the video settings. Okay, this is the video capture settings. It used to be that you had to hit apply, but now it just automatically applies. You can go down and select the eye selection. You can turn on or off video stabilization. Some of these settings are already available for uh, Quest in the actual recording tools, but this is where it gets interesting. Different capture formats, including resolution sizes for your capture. I'm running at 4K right now. I'm getting a 4K uh, capture. You could change the compression quality, megabits per second. I've got it at 25, a good spot to be that's not too much so I don't keep filling my Quest, and then I have it set at 60 frames per second. We're going to jump into something. Let's just jump into... We'll jump into tennis because that has an HD plus plus profile and uh, we'll show you some HD plus gameplay and just we'll see how that goes. All right. So one problem with using these profiles when you're recording is you might get some stutter. So we might have some frame drops here. That's why I'm trying to move really slow, but you can see the resolution bump. At least I'm hoping you can see it. I can see it hundred percent having recorded stuff in here with HD plus and without HD plus on. It's a massive, massive difference. The edges are clear. The resolution of all the text, the assets, it's all much clearer. It's much, much more, uh, you know, poppy or however you want to, whatever you want to call it. It's what 137% uh, is the sharpness rate. I mean, the resolution is set to 137%. So that means it's 37% sharper or higher resolution than the other version. So that's, and that's as easy as it is. You just either click on a profile here or you go into your main library and you click on a game. And if a game doesn't have a profile, you'll have to go in here. So say you're playing a game that doesn't have a profile, uh, like Star Vault. I've been playing that game. You can hit edit. You can set up your own profile here and you can save it. You can even send it to the developer if you want to say, look, they've got a profile and they may end up putting it here but you can set everything up yourself, which is great because that allows you to have your own personal profiles that you can make adjustments for that you're happy with. Whether you want a higher frame rate, but don't care as much about resolution, just a little bump, or you want more resolution and a lower frame rate, and you want to do it 72 hertz instead of 90. Whatever you want to do, you can test it and mess around with it. That's the beauty of this software is it's very customizable. All right, so now that you've seen how the options all work and how it functions in the headset, how do you get this thing set up? Well, at the moment, there are actually two different methods to do it, and it depends on what version of the Quest 3 software you have. If you have version 76 currently, then you have to use a PC with SideQuest to make this happen, and if you don't have version 76, you can actually do this all standalone on your headset without needing any PC. I'm gonna put a link in the description to the developer's explanation on how to do both of those because that way you can get the direct line from them. They know exactly what they're talking about. They're, the instructions are very clear. I'm gonna walk you through how to get the software set up once it's installed on your headset, whatever method you have to use. But instead of going through both of them, I'm gonna put a link so that you can grab whatever method you need down below. Once you've got it installed, come back and I'll talk you through how to get everything else set up. All right, so once you have the software on your Quest, what you need to do is go into your Unknown Sources tab in your menu. You're gonna open up the Quest Game Optimizer once you're in the Unknown Sources tab, and it's gonna pop up. It's gonna actually ask you to put the email address in that you use to purchase the software. It'll then jump into the main menu of the Quest Game Optimizer, but you're gonna see a red banner at the top. This means that you need to fix wireless debugging in order for this to actually work, meaning it'll allow you to change settings wirelessly and allowing you to adjust the settings for every game. Look at the red banner, you'll see a button, I believe it says options. You're gonna click on that and it's gonna bring you to some information on how to get things set up. What we need to essentially do is take and get a code to put in the little box there that allows this to be connected with wireless ADB. So what you're gonna to have to do is open up a couple of other windows. First of all, click on the button that says open settings. That's gonna open the settings menu for the Quest. You're then gonna scroll down to the bottom where it says about headset. 
Then once you're in that menu, scroll all the way to the bottom and it says build a number. You need to click on this seven times to activate the developer options. Now you have to have developer mode enabled for this to work. So as long as you have that enabled, then you just click on this seven times. Then you go back and in the same menu where it said about headset, you're gonna click on system. Now, if you go in the system menu, you're gonna see an option now that says developer options. Click on that menu button and then scroll down until you see ADB and it'll then say wireless debugging just below the USB debugging. You're gonna click that. You're then gonna turn on use wireless debugging. It's gonna ask you to allow it to connect to this network. Make sure you click always allow on this network. And then you're going to get a pairing code. So what you're gonna do is click on pair device with pairing code. Once you've hit that button, it's going to pop up with a six digit number. You're gonna put that six digit number into where it says code. And once you type that number in, you then hit enter and it'll automatically verify and you'll see at the top now the ADB button is green and there's no red bar. That'll get you in and set up so it's all ready to go and you can go through the menu like I showed you previously in the walkthrough for the software. And that's it. Then it's all set up. It really doesn't take that long once you get developer mode set up and you get the software on your headset and then you activate wireless debugging. You're free to get the most out of your Quest with this piece of software. I'm t I, I, I don't know how to overstate the fact that this is such a big deal. If, if you've used this, please, in the comments, tell people how big of a deal this truly is. I don't wanna be the only one singing its praises. I think that others can comment down below and let everyone else know just how big of a deal this is. It honestly is a game changer, and I don't say that lightly. It's a true game changer because it completely changes how you're seeing these games, and it's just absolutely amazing. But like I said, let me know down in the comments if you've used it so others can see what you think, or if you haven't used it, let me know what you're most excited to play with the Game Optimizer. Thank you so much for watching. After this portion, I'm gonna put a video that is a tutorial on how to set up developer mode, but before before we do that, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up so more people can see it and subscribe for more videos. Thank you again for watching, and as always, happy questing. Okay, if you don't have developer mode enabled, I'm now going to play a short tutorial on how to get developer mode enabled, and you can follow the links down in the description to get all this stuff done. So head to the link down in the description. You're then going to log in to your MetaQuest account and you're gonna click Create Organization. The next thing you need to do is to name your organization. It can really be anything fictitious or whatever you want it to be. Then agree to the terms and hit Submit. Meta does also require you to verify your developer account, so you'll need to either use a credit card or two-factor authentication to do that. Once you're all done that, you need to head to your MetaQuest app with your headset somewhere nearby. Once you're in the app, go down to the bottom right-hand side, you're gonna find Devices. Once you hit Devices, find your Quest 3 or whatever Quest you have and tap on it. You're then gonna go down and find the Headset Settings. And in that menu, you'll see a tab that says Developer Mode. Click on Developer, and then once you're in that menu, there should be a switch there that says Developer Mode. Make sure it is over to the right and blue so that it's on. 